the lot of children who live in poverty along with their parents. And often we see in the city of Cape Town and elsewhere, we've noted the number of homeless people have increased since um, the COVID lockdown. Poverty is a real, real issue. And it's not just adults, it is children. We recently got in touch with uh, a listener, Nuran Osman, who actually, in fact, runs a shelter for people who are in distress. And Nuran encountered a child who was by themselves at a traffic light. Along with Nuran, we're going to be speaking to Patrick Solomon, who's the director of Molo Songololo, Luke Lamprecht, who's the advocacy manager at Women and Men Against Child Abuse, and also Anne Slatter, who is uh, with the IK Street Children Organization in Durban, going to be talking about this issue. But Nuran joins us now on the line. Nuran, tell us your story. You work in the NGO space where you particularly look after and help people who are in distress. But you have a very, very interesting story when you encountered a child who was by themselves, unattended, at a robot. Good morning. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Um, yes, shocking, absolutely shocking. I popped by to McDonald's because I have young children of my own. Um, and as I pulled up to a traffic light, I saw a little man. Mm, I think he was barely a meter tall. And, and you know, so I, we stopped and asked if he was all right. Did he need anything? And he said he wanted some money. And I said, are you by yourself? You know, motherly in instinct, are you by yourself? And he said, yes, I am. I said, do you have a mom? And he said, yes, I do. I said, well, where is she? He said, she's picking me up when it gets dark. And then I was shocked because this was seven o'clock already. It was 10 to seven in the evening. And so I said, um, does she pick you up every night when it's dark? He says, yes, I come here alone every day. And then she picks me up when it's dark. And that's how the story unfolded. You um, then so took this, this kid um, you know, to I have, where he yes. says he's his parents or his mother lives. What happened? The child was very well schooled. So he tells us the story in the car. He raises a thousand rand a day. If he doesn't, his mom beats him. Um, he's not allowed to play with other children. This is his employment. He, he goes there every day. And sometimes when she doesn't come when it's dark, he walks back by himself. So it's not the best thing to do. But I said, can you get in the car with us? I'm going to take you back home. Of course, I wanted to have it out with mom, but we then loaded it. He got in the car so quickly, it was shocking. No questions, no suspicion, just got in the car. Um, so we drove off and we took him to the local squatter camp where he said he lived. When we got there, people said he actually doesn't live there. Um, so he was obviously already schooled about if the police pick you up, if a social worker picks you up, don't, take, don't go to the home address. Um, I had no other choice but to take him to our place of safety. I was not going to leave this child on the street or in a squatter camp, um, after which the community reported him missing and, you know, people started calling me. Um, but it was very suspicious for me that for every single day that he stood at that traffic light begging, no one did anything. Suddenly, when I picked him up, I was getting threatened by some community members. There was a threat that you could have been charged with kidnapping based on you wanting to take this kid to a place of safety, Neuron. Absolutely. So I called the police station. I work very closely with Manenberg Saps because I have to. It's my job. Um, and so I, I spoke with the officer. She said, don't worry, Neuron. I'm going to help you immediately. Let me call DSD and the Child Protection Agency, who I won't name. One of the social workers said, make her return the child very quickly. I believe there were wow. two social workers advising. I'm also a social worker by profession. So I knew that this wasn't accurate, but I then, um, uh, she then said, make her return the child to the mother very quickly um, because she'll be charged with kidnapping. The other alarming thing for me was the social worker had said, and again, this is inaccurate. I'm sure the others on the panel will agree with me. She said Nuran would need to prove the mother's neglect and she'd have to prove that the mother's a substance using person um, to, you know, to justify why she had taken the child. I said, I went on, onto Facebook and I said, you know what? Arrest me. Please arrest me because this is a worthy cause. Okay, I want, I'm bringing to this conversation Anne Slatter. She's with IK Street Children. She's the general manager based in <laughs> Durban not too long ago. And you raised the alarm of actual syndicates operating in the <laughs> Durban area of, of syndicate leaders 
training, instructing, putting fear into vulnerable children that you go out, you stand on corners, you go beg for money, you return with that money, you give it to us and we'll give you whatever we feel. How, how serious have you found the issue, particularly in Durban? Um, well, you know what, street children live in, uh, well, we've come to the streets for various reasons. And one of them is being poverty, and well, two of them being poverty and abuse. And so when they come to the streets, they need to find themselves a safe space, safe space to sleep in the evenings or, you know, rest. Mm -hmm. And so they are then charged by the people who have then taken ownership of that park or that space. And so, yes, they are expected to bring something back at the end of the day. Um, and, you know, so that they get their sleeping space and, and can remain safe in that space. So, yes, there are these types of syndicates out there and um, we know about them. And it's, it's just one way these children survive on the streets. When I see and I, and I have money, I, I give um, because I also believe it's okay. choice is also the privilege. We often we often underestimate that ability to choose whether you buy milk or bread or anything is a privilege. So, so I give, and if they are children, maybe it, it tugs on my heartstrings even more. So I, so I give. Luke Lamprecht is an advocacy manager at Women and Men Against Child Abuse. He particularly also does um, the policing around vulnerable children. Look, we have bylaws in the city of Cape Town, which particularly speak to that it is illegal to use an animal for begging. We don't have a similar bylaw when it comes to children. And I can understand the complexity. Parents are forced to go out and stand on at the intersection and ask for something. There's no way safe to keep the child, so they'll bring the child with them. And the child could probably stand there with them all all day based on the conversations that you've heard so far what are your concerns particularly around the vulnerability and the lack of choice that children have when trying to solve or, or ease the burden of a hungry tummy poverty within their family that 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 little bit of resource that their family may need good morning luke well lester i think you picked up on the complexity very very succinctly if the parents went out and begged because of the nature of poverty in the country and they left their children unattended, they would be seen to be in contravention of the Children's Act because the children are not being cared for and they've essentially been abandoned for the day. However, when you take the children to beg with you, you're in contravention of another piece of legislation where you're exploiting, exploiting them for financial gain. So it's, it's a really complex catch-22 and it's particularly complex for law enforcement as well. We've seen in other instances where there are sort of the, the trade in children. So what's what's happening is you don't have the two scenarios you and I have discussed. We, we have another scenario where you've got a group of people who live within the inner city and they're different children. They actually are going and they are renting their children out among one another. And we're getting parents who are presenting um, as, you know, as, as the parents of the children, but they're actually not the parents. So we, we started taking photos of the children and the parents when they were presenting uh, to the, for example, the Metro Police who were trying to enforce the fact that they were on the street. Now, you would take a photo today of a mom with a child. Tomorrow, it's the same mom, but a different child or a different child and the same mom. So they were actually using the children in order to actually trade. And the final issue we're seeing is that this particular grouping, this group of vulnerable children developmentally fall between a million different cracks. And as your first speaker was saying, is that it just appears the social workers have largely wiped their hands of it and saying, you know, that you know, these children, we don't know what to do with them. And in the city where I work, which is the city of Joburg, we are having the um, Department of Social Development social workers clearly saying to us there's nothing they can do because it's a city mandate. The city telling us that Metro is not going to arrest these mothers because then there's no place of safety for the children. And essentially what's happening is we just completely lose these children to a, a completely inept system and the parents um, are not being helped nor held accountable. Uh, look, I also don't want to be a um, 
a middle class person that clutches my pearls and say, of course, people are, are, are using um, children to scam me. This is a very, very important complex issue of, yes, people who take advantage, but also people trying to find at least something to ease the burden of hunger on a daily basis. And if it takes sharing children to tug on the heartstrings of people in their, in their single occupant cars at Robux, people will do that because we have the complex issue, deep issue of poverty and hunger in this country, Look. And, and, and in, in addition to that complexity, it's, children on the side of the road with their parents, whether it's their parents or not their parents, with adults, where the adults can't get employment to feed their children. And the only thing they have, as you say, is to sort of clutch at the heartstrings of sort of middle class suburbia. Um, that, that is a sign of the failure of our entire social service system, that we cannot support parents to support their children. So the children are using, the parents are using the children to support them and the children. Now, all that is is a glaring, um, it, it just, it, it's an in your face, a glaring failure of an entire social service mm -hmm. delivery system that has sort of made poverty, uh, children and parents in poverty entirely invisible to the system. Nirana, I want to come back to you. There are plenty of questions here that are seeking simplistic answers that ask, should I give or not? I, I give, and, and I understand the complexity, and, and maybe even someone is obviously i don't want to be party to exploitation but my my first idea would be yes because i understand that poverty runs deep in this country your response is someone asks you directly should i give or not i wish i knew the answer Lester, exactly. but it's, <laughs> it's twofold the one is for example our, our shelter did a food drive for vulnerable women in the community some of these women were substance using persons and ended up selling the food and it was reported back to us so i wish i knew the answer it's really a matter of yes give but maybe not money or well if you're going to give food chances are it could be stolen i don't know my 10-year-old my suggests that we pack extra sandwiches because they can't sell the sandwich. I wish I knew the answer. From your experience in Durban, Anne, um, I, I read the report uh, a couple of weeks ago regarding this apparent scheme, an exploitation ring operating in Durban. What worried me is while NGOs were saying, this happens, this is the reality, but I saw a response from uh, Etekweni Metro. I saw a response from the South African Police Service saying, well, we have no official report yet. You know what's happening on the street, but there seems to be very little action from the people who are legislated to keep children safe from people who are exploiting them, maybe even trafficking them. How do you then alert this issue to police, to people who have legislative powers, um, prosecuting powers, criminal investigating powers, say, please act on this. So, um, so we have obviously got city bylaws that, um, you know, begging is one of the, the bylaws that you can't beg on the streets or be a nuisance amongst in the traffic or, you know, get in the way. Um, but obviously, you know, it's a, it's a difficult thing when you've got a child coming to the streets, and as Luke said, very honestly, it, it happens here in Durban as well, that, that children are brought to the streets by so-called mothers who've rented them in the communities, and the, the mothers who they've rented them from are going to get some money when those kids come home, and so it's just a it's just a vicious circle, and when those mothers come to the city or come to the very busy intersections with those kids in the morning and spend the day there, um, the police and the child welfare and, and social development find it so difficult to then go and arrest that mother. Because if you arrest that mother, you're taking the child in as well. And then it's not their child. So what do you do with their child? How do you get that child back to who the mother really is? It's just a vicious circle. Mm. And it's one that I think the, the law enforcement kind of run away from. And they think that it's just too complex to deal with. So us as an organization, we try and have a look at it as well. And if the child is a true street child, obviously we begin work mm. immediately. But again, we have to just advise the mothers, look, you're, 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 you're against the law here and you, you can be held up for um, trafficking, child abuse. And 
you know, sometimes you, you police that, that intersection and they perhaps move away for a day or two, but they're back and they're back soon. And Slater, she's with IK Street Children in Durban. Luke Lamprecht is the advocacy manager at women, uh, Men and Women Against Child Abuse and also Nuran Osman. She's the director of the Hata Shelter here in Cape Town. Thank you so much for the time. We, we don't profess to solve South Africa's problems within a three-hour radio show, but we can at least start talking about it. Thanks so much for joining us here on Good Morning Cape Town. <laughs> Thank you.